Hi, I'm Malin. Uh, this is Love Zero Waste Live, the live recording of a podcast. And I'm welcoming you all to the one month long scan of zero waste trends in Europe. We're collaborating with Zero Waste Europe and this week is Environmental Week. Be period proud and check out the toolbox over at Break Free From Plastic. So with us today, we have Sofia Sidorenko, responsible for the environmental topic at Zero Waste Alliance in Ukraine. Hi, Sofia. Welcome to Love Zero Waste Live. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're super happy to have you with us. So uh, let's start with the beginning, Sofia. Before autumn 2019, there were not a lot of conversations on env environmental topics in Ukraine. How did you introduce this topic? Thank you very much for this question. Um, first of all, maybe a little bit of a Ukrainian context, as I think it might be not just Ukrainian, it might be in other countries. But menstrual topic and the conversations about menstruation and things like that are usually perceived as something to be uh, quiet about, that people are very shy about it. I remember me being in uh, high school and hiding a single-use uh, pad so nobody sees it, so nobody knows that we actually do have menstruation. So taking into account this, there was also not a lot of conversations about options uh, which we can use during menstruation. And I wouldn't say that we did not have any of the conversations about it, but they were usually very closed. They were usually very quiet and in small groups or small forums where only a limited number of people could read that information. And it, would, it was perceived as something for not everybody, for some, I don't know, not, not special people, but just for some people, that it's not actually normal, that single use, when we are talking about uh, menstrual items, that single use is normal and reusables are not, not really normal. Another thing that we, we are actually facing this challenge at the moment, especially talking about um, reusable pads, because uh, Ukraine is a post-Soviet Union country and uh, we have been independent for 29 years. We are very proud of it. But um, during the Soviet times, there was no single-use pads and all of them, all of the pads were reusable. And uh, now, for now, we know that it's actually good, it's great. But there is a lot of women, especially a bit uh, older generation, who perceive reusable pads as something old fashioned, something uncomfortable, something that they don't want to deal with. Because when they, when they got single use ones, they were very excited that it, it makes it much easier. But nobody was thinking at that time how much of damage it will bring. So we are also now trying to renew this uh, as something modern, as something great, as something better for our health and for the environment. So how, it, how we began to talk about it to wider public, actually, it was a very interesting thing because um, in one and a half years ago, Oh, I was uh, I was posting on Facebook time after time some reuse, some useful environmental tips, and just one time because I started using menstrual cup a uh, long time ago, and for me it was just life changing experience with no doubt. And for me, uh, at that moment, I was questioning why there is no so much of information about such a comfortable solution. It's not it's. I have to admit, it's not only about the environment, it's actually extremely useful and it's extremely comfortable and it's really, really nice to have it, <laughs> to use it. So for me, when I started using it, I was very much, in, I was very much um, surprised that there is not so much information. And one of the publications that I made was about menstrual cup and I posted a picture showing menstrual cup because for me to be honest it wasn't something uh, that we should be hiding but i i didn't think it through to be honest because what i've heard from the audience it was like 
wow, you actually, you're showing this in outside of the closed room, closed department. You are actually public on Facebook. And this uh, post uh, got a lot of attention and uh, a lot of conversations that it's actually okay. It's it's completely okay, first of all, to talk about it, second of all, to try it, and third of all, to get to know more about it and try to use it. So uh, after that, we saw that there is such a great interest towards this topic, and we decided that we definitely need to join the Great Environmental Campaign. And I have to admit that this name of the campaign is just uh, made made it uh, much easier for us to join. <laughs> I think it's a genius name. And uh, in um, October 2019, last year, uh, we before that we decided that we will join, and uh, we did. And what we did during that week, uh, we, we had a very clear uh, vision and understanding that of the messages that we would want to bring. And first of all, we wanted to bring more information to people, just as, just as it is, that there is reusable solutions during, during your period, and they are useful, and they are comfortable, and they are completely okay, and they are affordable. And they're not only affordable, they actually make you save money, and they actually make you save and help environment, and they help you not to produce so much trash in, in your life. So we wanted to bring out this information, and we wanted to give as much information as we could. So we started explained about different different reusable options and how to use them how to take care of them and uh, and so on and another message that we wanted to, to give out is about how normal it is that it's normal it's a new normal it's not something for a very specific group of people you can you can be one of one of those who uses them who um who helps your body who helps environment and it's 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 okay and another thing that we wanted to share it was about safety because there was a lot of um, misunderstandings and miscommunication about that it, reusables are not safe what we actually see especially during the pandemic and how um, how producers of single-use things actually exploit this topic of not being safe. So we've had a lot of uh, this um, not, not uh, true information about danger of uh, reusable cups, of uh, not properly cleaned uh, products, uh, reusable products and things like that. So what, what we did during the campaign last year, first of all, we translated the great report that Zero Waste Europe with other partners um, uh, gave out. The Sorry, I need to look at, oh, what's the name? We, you definitely know about it, but I, I very much recommend to read it. Yeah, we can include it in, in the notes as well for everybody that's listening or watching this to, uh, oh, to nice. check it out as well. Definitely will. It's the environmental and economic costs of single-use menstrual products, baby nappies and wet wipes. It was produced by Zero Waste Europe and other partners. And uh, what we did, we got this report and we translated it into, into Ukrainian to make it um, accessible for people to have data, actual data, where they can come and read and see everything about it. And then uh, we joined up uh, a lot of our producers. Maybe we can talk about th that later, but that was a big opening for us that there are actually quite a few producers of reusable items in Ukraine, which very, we are very excited about. And uh, we also... Um, Hmm. We also, oh, of course, we gave out a lot of, uh, we, get, we did a lecture, we did a webinar, so we wanted to record and give out as much information as possible just about, about such thing. And uh, we are very excited that it got a lot of great feedback and it actually proved us that we need to move this topic along, which we are st still doing. 
Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Um, what would be from, from your experience in like breaking the taboo and getting through those barriers for anyone uh, that would like to talk about menstruation or anything that deals with period products or such, uh, what would be your top tips in breaking that taboo? Uh, first of all, I would say that it is very, um, there are so many limits in our head that we give ourselves because sometimes we think that it's something that we are not supposed to be talking about. And then it turns out when you start talking about it, that's something that people are very, very eager to hear and that it's completely okay and it's completely uh, well perceived among the society. Um, another thing I would say that there is, there will always be people who will not agree with you, who will judge, who will discuss, who will, um, I don't know, neglect the topic that you are talking about. But I would recommend to concentrate on people who this information is actually very useful. And this is the majority, the this minority who judges is just very loud. That's why it seems that there is more of them, but it's actually not. So we need to give out this information for those who need this information. And my personal attitude towards this topic and any other topic is always give it out with positivity. Um, don't argue, just do what you can with a smile, with jokes, and uh, it actually perceived much better than in some conference room with ties and everything but it's it also works it also works mm -hmm. yeah so thinking back what you mentioned with the uh, local manufacturers of uh, yeah that they are producing reusable um, menstrual products uh, how, how did you develop uh, the collaboration with them and and how does their uh, own production or development look like in terms of reusability uh, thank you very much for this question as well. Um, this is my personal favorite part of this, especially seeing how these producers actually grow. Because last year, when we just started this topic, we knew some of the producers. Uh, we also knew some of the retailers who were buying cups abroad and bringing them to Ukraine. But this was a very, very small amount of people. And for me, it was very interesting, but a bit, a bit um, challenging to find them and to... Actually, it was just the challenge to find them. Then when we found them and we introduced the topic to them and explained what we are going to do, I did not have any um, refusal from the producers because they were actually those who were very much eager for people to know more. And most of the time uh, there were, these are women. I have to admit that mm, all of them, all of the producers of menstrual uh, reusable products are women. And uh, most of them started producing that because of their own personal need. For instance, one of our producers, she is actually from Lviv. Um, she started sewing reusable pads just for herself. And then she, she just started telling her friends that she is doing that. And they started ordering. And then she started producing more and more and more. And now she is actually... Um, one of the one of the biggest, I would say, local because she's handmade producer. So now she's thinking how she could expand her production, but but keeping the quality of the of her products. Uh, then uh, we found out that there is actually a great. Um, a great woman who had a blog about uh, different uh, issues that um, people might have during um, menstruation, and it's not only she was not only talking about um, she was not only talking about menstrual um, products, but she was just talking about the whole what body goes through, what uh, all the all the things that are connected with this, and she was also talking she was touching a lot this 
importance of using reusables and importance of understanding that single use is very not safe for your body, not safe for environment. And then when we introduced her the the topic and the environmental week, she decided that she would actually want to have this as her main focus. And she was she is now creating producing the menstrual uh, underwear. And uh, she was uh, having few, she was having a little bit of menstrual cups, but then after that environmental week in 2019, we introduced her to a producer of menstrual cups in Ukraine and they started collaborating with each other. So now she is having the menstrual cups that are also produced in Ukraine and are also really, really good. And, uh, um, so they they started working together which is also great and before november before october 2019 we did not know that there were producer of menstrual cups i knew about the pads and i knew about the underwear but i did not know about the cups and as it turned out there is there was actually one producer of menstrual cups and uh, she was she told me that she's been she's been working in the field for 10 years and only during last year she was actually able to uh, she told me that her family finally understands why she's doing and what she's doing actually <laughs> so wow. she she told me that uh, the during this last year she raised her um production by 80 percent and that it actually is still going going up uh all along so amazing so, yeah. um but gazing then into the future and and the trends on the way that you are collaborating with business and the way that you see that local businesses in ukraine are going towards reuse um what what are your trends scan on on that um, this is a very big topic for us and actually we want to work in this direction much more because uh, we still have this uh, idea and desire to make reusables normal and affordable and accessible. And uh, that's why uh, we not only collaborate with the local producers, but we also during last May, during the menstrual health day, it, it's actually called menstrual hygiene day, but uh, we know that they are now in the process of renaming it. So in Ukraine, it has never happened. So we decided that we actually will rename it in Ukraine and it's all good. So now it's menstrual health day in Ukraine on 28th of May. And that day we decided to dedicate specifically towards the work with the retailers. So we created an, uh, an open letter that we sent out to biggest to big chains and small shops and drug stores and different specialized um, shops which sell uh, different kinds of things and we were asking them to bring reusables to their uh, shelves so they become more uh, accessible for people so they are not marginalized uh, just within small communities and we've had um, we are going to work with this uh, for sure in the future and we are going to move this topic along but we know that after that campaign few drug stores uh, decided that they would want to have this uh, item these items in their um, in the list of their products and there is also um, work now still going on with the business association in Ukraine who work with different retailers and they are trying to find the way how to actually bring um, their there is a very um, unfortunately not unfortunately it's a normal thing but the the big chains of uh, big supermarkets need to have certified and uh, very they need to have certified uh, pro pro products and uh, in ukraine local small producers not always are able to have all the documentations that is needed for these big chains so if you're talking about small shops there is no problem there is so many small shops either it's a zero waste shop or just a small shop that sells different kind kinds of things for home they are already selling these 
uh, reusable items. But if we're talking about bigger uh, markets, it is, a, it is a bit more difficult. Uh, but we understand that it's important that it will have great impact and we are now um, trying to work out the way for our local producers to uh, organize all the needed documents for that and hopefully in uh, maybe next year we will have the same conversation and i will be able to tell you that yay in every third store in ukraine we have menstrual cups <laughs> i am <laughs> looking <underwear>. forward <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, well, that would be amazing, really. Um, Sophia, thank you so much for joining Love Zero White Slime on the topic of Environmental Week. <laughs>